capturing the reward is wonderful, but attaching dopamine to the reward is actually a little bit dangerous. Celebrating the win more than the pursuit, it actually sets you up for failure in the future. And oh so this God. gets us right into something called dopamine reward prediction error. And reward prediction error is basically if you expect something to be really great, and then it's not quite that great, your dopamine baseline lowers. And now understanding what we know about dopamine, that means that not only did you, you feel as if you lost because it wasn't as much a celebration as you thought it would be, but it also means that you're starting from a lower place, meaning you are less motivated. Anytime you have a bunch of dopamine and you're in pursuit, 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 after you achieve a win, now this could be a, a business win, a relationship, a win of any kind, but inevitably, there's going to be a tipping back of the scale on the pain side. And that pain side is always gonna go a little bit higher than the dopamine side. So this is what you would feel if you pursued a goal like building a big company, here it comes, here it comes, the big sale, and then there's the, well, what now? The kind of letdown. Now, if you wait, if you simply wait and stop pursuing dopamine for a short while, the scale starts to reset. The problem is a lot of people immediately roll right into the next pursuit. And then what happens is that scale starts to get stuck on the pain side. A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And pretty soon, no amount of seeking will allow you to experience that craving and motivation. Dopamine. It's working with its close cousin, which is epinephrine, which is adrenaline. They are very close cousins. In fact, dopamine manufactures epinephrine. A lot of people don't know this, but adrenaline is actually made from the molecule dopamine. Okay, so those Jesus. two are hanging out together. It's like crave work, crave work, crave and work, crave and work, crave and work. And then you get the win. And some people allow the big peak in dopamine to be associated with the win. And smart people learn to adjust their celebration internally, right? This is all internal. You could throw the biggest party in the world, but as long as you're kind of in, laid back and looking at this, not letting yourself get manic crazy, you won't necessarily crash as hard, and pretty soon your system will reset so that you take the day, you clean up the dishes, you relax, you go, what now, I'm feeling a little low. Well, rather than going out and spiking your dopamine again, just wait, understand that the scale will reset again. Give yourself a few days where you're gonna feel a little kind of underwhelmed, things aren't gonna be as interesting. It's gonna be hard to trigger that big release because you just had the, the peak, well, if you adjust that, you relax, you understand there's always a little bit of a postpartum depression. We sometimes hear about postpartum depression, that's a clinical thing, but there's always that kind of, hmm, today's not as exciting as a previous day's. What, what am I gonna do with my life? But then, if you let it start ratcheting up again, then what you realize is your capacity to tap into dopamine as a motivator, not just seeking dopamine rewards, that is infinite. And I think for most people, we think of the reward as the finish line. And so the key is to get to the finish line, step into the end zone, but no end zone dance. It's just like, yep, and now I'm gonna go do it again. That's really the key. That's, that's the key to doing it over and over. And when I see big athletes or academics or anyone or musicians and they rise and crash, it's clear they've lost the touch with the motivation evoked dopamine.